Okay, so the five most commonly asked questions. See the things that the planners learn first, I think, when they're working, um, first working here for the city at the planner's desk. People ask about fences. What kind of fence? How tall? Where can I place my fence? But we do have regulations uh, for fencing, and they generally have to be short and see-through on the front of your house because we don't want to create this uh, you know, wall. When you're walking down the street, we want it to be open and a livable community. So if you're inside a house, you can see out what's happening on your street, and people feel like it's a friendly environment to walk down the street. But on your backyard, your side yard, your backyard, you can do a much taller fence. You can have a six foot fence, you can go up even higher if you get a building permit, and it can go generally right on your property line, so you and your neighbor kind of have equal rights to that, so mo most neighbors will work together to build a new fence. And if your backyard's on a street, some people have that situation, they can still do those higher fences for privacy. People always ask about building sheds or shops or outbuildings, you know, whatever you want to call it. And especially if they're gonna buy a new property, it seems like they're really always interested um, in that. And so you can put those in your backyard generally. Generally not your front yard, but your backyard and your side yard sometimes, depending on your lot configuration. And if it's under 200 square feet, you don't need a building permit, but there are still zoning regulations. So you don't wanna kind of stop with, oh, no building permit, and then maybe get to a situation where you violated the setback or the height. So we can help people understand um, where in their backyard they can place it. And the setbacks are really dependent on the height. So we can talk to them about their specific situation. We also have regulations to make sure you don't cover your entire backyard with shops or sheds and then also about what the use is going to be. You know, if people do yoga studios or art studios or home offices and all that's fine. If they're going to do something for living, then that's a different kind of permitting process for like an accessory dwelling unit where someone's going to be inhabiting it. Um, and then obviously, even if you don't need a b building permit, and you meet the setbacks, if you're going to put ele electrical in it, um, or you're going to have a bathroom in it, you will need permits for, for those kinds of situations as well. People ask a lot about parking. They want to add more parking on their lot or storage, boat storage, RV storage. Those are very popular um, questions. And generally, you can't just store your boat or your RV anywhere on your property, and you definitely can't just throw down gravel um, and park it there. Um, you'll, we'll probably get complaints pretty quickly. We get a lot of those complaints. And so we can help people understand what, what could be an approved parking pad and screening and what wouldn't work. Um, and it really depends on their lot configuration and, and where they're trying to put it and, and what kind of access they have and how far they are away from the street and the setbacks, etc. I will say gravel's almost never gonna work. We generally require everything to be paved. Uh, people ask a lot about trees. You know, can I remove my tree? Um, can I cut this tree for, for whatever reason? It depends. So you definitely would always want to talk to planning before you prepare to cut down a tree. Um, we do have new tree regulations. There's a lot, of, a lot more trees that are protected now based on the size of the tree. So you might be aware that previously we protected Oregon white oaks. Um, we continue to do that, but we've changed the regulations so that um, the smaller Oregon white oaks are protected. And, and then any large tree is protected, which generally means that you need a permit um, before you can remove them. And you have to meet the criteria, so there has to be something wrong with the tree. Generally, it can't just be for really large trees that you just don't want it anymore, or that it has too many leaves or needles falling from it. There needs to be something wrong with the tree. We also uh, have regulations that prevent you from just cutting the whole crown of a tree. Um, so you can, can't cut more than 30% of the crown. So you can do you know, maintenance and trimming, especially after the ice storm, right? Lots of people needed to trim up their limbs. Um, but you can't go and cut the whole top off of a tree and say, well, I cut my tree, it's still here, right? We would consider that um, tree removal without a permit. People ask a lot about new driveways and curb cuts, and so we do have limitations on where you can do that. Um, so we have limitations on where you can park vehicles. For example, you can't say, well, I'm just, I am gonna pave. I heard you say I had to do pavement. I'm gonna pave my front yard. And then that way my, you know, my kids, the teenagers, they drive now, will have a place to put their car. Generally, you can't do that. We wanna ensure that parking happens in a garage, in a carport, in an approved screened parking pad, or on a driveway leading to those areas. So um, it's totally fine if you 
don't use gr your garage for parking. Um, if you have your Christmas decorations there or something, um, you can park in your driveway and that's fine, um, but you can't then just pave another parking pad next to it necessarily to park. So again, it's pretty specific on the property and so we can help people figure out if that's an option for them or not.